Spending about 200 bucks on a fancy colorimeter that you probably only use once doesn't sound very appealing, right? So can we actually calibrate our monitors without such a tool, basically by using only our eyes and a smartphone? Can we really make a monitor more color accurate that way? Or will we actually make things worse? Well, I happen to have a pair of eyes and I have a colorimeter on hand to verify what we're doing. So I guess we're gonna find out. Now, there are tons of websites that claim to have just the perfect test pictures, patterns and whatnot to calibrate a monitor by eye. To be honest though, a lot of these tests are either pretty useless, poorly made or very, very situational. Two of my favorite websites for test pictures are the ISO monitor test and Legom. We won't need every single test from these two sites, but they generally provide good quality and useful test pictures. Now, for a clean start, I already did a full reset of the monitor. I also checked that those weird image enhancement features are actually turned off and I chose the most customizable mode. Now, at first glance, the screen seems to be a bit too green and too blue, less of which is a very common problem. So let's check if we can improve the color temperature first. Now, for that, we wanna use a neutral gray or white test picture. We're gonna just misuse the defective pixels and uniformity test from the ISO monitor test for that. With a white test picture, we now want to go into the monitor's menu and adjust the color temperature or RGB sliders. I could now try and just completely eyeball it, but honestly, without any reference, this actually is pretty difficult, especially if you're not used to seeing calibrated screens every day. So a popular trick to make this a bit easier is using a few sheets of white paper as a reference. It's important though that we don't have the monitor shining on the pieces of paper or it would make all of this pretty useless. Instead we want it to reflect the ambient light, which hopefully is close to the daylight's color temperature and tint. So I'm gonna hold it a bit like this and adjust the RGB settings to make the white of the monitor match the white of the paper. Now, as you might have noticed, I'm only turning the values down and never go above the default starting value. Even though it's possible on some monitors, you should almost never turn them higher than the default value, which is 50 in case of this monitor. Also try to adjust only two of these three sliders and try to let the other one stay at its default position. This will keep you from making overly extreme adjustments and also keep you from reducing the contrast of your monitor too much. Generally, you want to avoid any extreme adjustments here. If you need more than a 10% adjustment, you're likely doing something wrong. And as you probably can see, that's exactly the case here. The white of the paper looks very different from the white of the monitor, and I need to make massive adjustments to get the monitor even remotely close to what the paper looks like. So, what am I doing wrong here? Well, the problem is that I'm using artificial lights instead of sunlight. I have my studio lights on for recording this video and they have a vastly different color temperature than our average daylight. And that's actually true for most household lights as well. Our goal though is to meet the so-called D65 white point which basically is the standard white point for monitor calibration these days and was created to best represent average daylight. So as you might have guessed, this paper trick won't work well if you're using artificial light instead of sunlight. You probably will end up making massive adjustments and getting a pretty different white point in that case. So I'm gonna turn off my video lights for a moment, let some sunlight in and do those adjustments again. So the adjustments are done, but I'm actually not very confident that I did a good job here. So let's take measurement and actually see. So out of the box, the monitor had a delta E of about 5.0 in comparison to the D65 Y point. So this is what we gotta beat. So let's see. So did this paper trick work? Well, it actually worked way better than I thought it would. We did not only improve the white point by a huge margin, but also got extremely close to what we can achieve with real calibration. I honestly did not expect it to work that well. I mean, there is some potential for errors, but generally I'm impressed of how well this worked out. So let's tackle the gamma curve next. 
One thing to keep in mind though is that the color temperature and gamma are only part of what makes a monitor color accurate. A real calibration and profiling can do much more than that. But yeah, let's see how far we can get without that. Now I'm probably gonna look a bit weird now, but what you want to be doing with those gamma tests is squinting your eyes so that you don't see individual pixels and then look at those vertical columns and see where the lines blend into each other. And the number at which those lines blend into each other is the gamma the monitor has right now. And I'm trying to change the gamma setting of the monitor to make it as close as possible to the 2.2 mark in Legom's test. So I'm gonna go to the monitors menu, search for the gamma setting, and we actually have a gamma setting that's called 2.2. But when I'm squinting my eyes, I can see that it's actually a bit too low. This is too low, this is still too low, and this seems about right. Now the monitor now says it has a gamma of 2.4, but according to Legom's test, it's actually closer to 2.2. Still it's not perfect, and if you think you're needing additional adjustments, you can open up your graphics card control software, and here in the Nvidia control panel for instance, you will find additional gamma controls under the Adjust Desktop Color Settings tab. And again, with the Legom monitor test open, we can adjust the gamma slider, That looks about perfect. So let's pull up the measurement device again and see how I did. Well, not very good actually. I was able to spot that the gamma was too low, but then I overcorrected and went beyond the gamma target. I do have to say that I find these gamma calibration graphics pretty hard to use. And I don't think they work well for precise gamma corrections. Now, what about calibrating the brightness? I mean, by eye, it's close to impossible to say which brightness this monitor has right now, other than, well, saying it's either too bright or too dim for your personal taste. Conveniently though, a typical smartphone has at least one brightness sensor built in, so let's try using that. I'll be using an app called Lux Light Meter Pro, but there are tons of similar apps available for Android and iOS. Now, I know that this monitor is at 138 nits right now, because that's what I set it to by using a colorimeter. So let's see how close the app can actually get. Now, right from the start, there's a bit of a problem. The app only shows us lux, which is a unit of illuminance. But we actually want to know the brightness of the monitor, or rather luminance, which is measured in nits. I really don't want to get in too much detail here, but we can convert lux to nits by multiplying it with a simple factor. Conveniently, the app already provides us with a calibration slider that we can use for that. Not so convenient though, is that this factor can be very different depending on which smartphone you are using. So we gotta find out this factor first. We just gotta find out how bright the brightest setting of the monitor is supposed to be and use that for our calibration. We get this information either from reviews or from the spec sheet. Reviews are definitely preferred though. So this monitor is supposed to go up to 350 nits according to Acer. So I have the brightness turned up all the way now and now I just need to adjust the calibration slider until we get about 350 lux, which should be 350 nits in this case. Just about there, seems about right. Now that the calibration is done, let's say I want to get this monitor to roughly 140 nits, because that's a pretty good brightness for moderately bright rooms. I already know that a brightness setting of 21 will get us as close as possible to that, because I measured that with the colorimeter. But let's see where we land using the app. So we arrived at a brightness setting of 23, which is only two brightness steps above the settings I figured out using the colorimeter, and that's pretty impressive. That's not even five nits over our brightness target, and to our eyes, that's almost the same brightness. 
So yeah, I think that was pretty successful. The paper trick for dialing in the color temperature was also pretty good and actually worked much better than I thought it would. Only the gamma correction by eye was kind of difficult and not very successful, at least for me. Let me know if you have any other calibration tricks and tests you'd like me to check out as well. And in case you want to see a guide on how to set up your monitor, including all the other settings, I highly recommend watching this video that I put on screen right now. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.